Today is the day of blessing. Today is the day of your salvation. Today is a time that you can group yourself together and position yourself for tomorrow. So sufficient of the things of today is the evil thereof. So don't worry about what's happened in the past. Today is your day. Today is the day that we're going to look for the good way. Okay, let, let us just give you a little bit. We're not going to be very long today because we have uh, uh, obligations just like you do. But we want to start our day uh, in, in the Word. We want to start our day with prayer. And we want to give you something to go by. We want to give you something to feast upon during your, your day, during your time. Uh, when you might get into a situation where you might need to resort back to the word, we want to give you something that will help you to do that. Today we're talking about the good way because th there, there is a better way in life. There's a way uh, that have led us even to desire to seek our salvation. Something had to happen in our life in order to get us to the point where we start seeking out our salvation. What was that? What happened that, that's got us looking into the Word? It's got us studying the Word. It must be the different ways and the di different encounters that we had uh, uh, in our experiences with life. We must have found something that, that wasn't right. We Something had to happen in our life to prove to us that, hey, you need something better. You, that There's something missing in life, and this is what we're doing. This is the job that we have uh, today by praying and fasting and seeking the face of the Most High is to try to impose upon men and women and try to get them to stop, look, and to examine what is going on in this world. What What am I here for? I know it's more than to be here to have fun or to, to to just talk about a family time. You know, sometimes people say, well, I don't go uh, to the assembly because I that's my family night. Well, you wouldn't have a family if it wasn't for the Most High. You wouldn't have the opportunity or be blessed enough to do the, the entertaining things that you do had it not been for the Most High. So I don't believe that we ought to feel like uh, uh, spending time in the assembly or among your sisters and brothers is a threat to your family. That's what makes your family is uh, the presence of being among the people of the Most High. Uh, sometimes people have a, a tendency to put the, the Savior, salvation aside trying to talk about my family, anything just to uh, get out of the responsibility of serving the Most High. And uh, this is a terrible thing to do. You're missing something. Your family can be more blessed if you would count him in. You are going under the desires of your own pernicious ways and isolating him and putting him aside this is what caused trouble and problems in our life. When we shove the life giver away to try to live the life that he has given us. He's the one that's going to show you the path that you should take so that your life should be or can be better. Our focus of uh, scriptures today is coming from Jeremiah 6 and 16. And I'm going to read it to you. It says, Thus saith the Lord. See, sometimes people don't understand. They think it all, uh, that's just Bishop Coleman always doing that talking. No, this scripture says, Thus saith the Lord. I'm just like a, a person that is reading your mail. Sometimes, you know, or, or delivering. That's a better word. Delivering your mail because it's against the law to open somebody's mail, you got to give it to them. So I'm the delivery man, uh, delivering your mail. So uh, if the mailman bring you a bill that you don't like, you don't haul off and knock him out. What you bringing me this bill for? Bam! And just knock the mailman out because he brought you a bill. He's just the mailman. So I'm just 
the deliverer of the word. We're, I'm just here to deliver what the Most High said. And this scripture starts off by saying, thus said the Lord. So we don't, you don't want to hear what he's got to say? That's what people are saying, you know, uh, why you keep on coming to me with, well, thus said the Lord. You don't want to hear what he's got to say? If the creator of the universe, if the one that, that has all power in his hand, the one that, that uh, promotes and pull men up and bring men down, if he have something to say to you, you mean to tell me you, you're too big and bad and too busy to hear what thus said the Lord? He said, thus said the Lord, stand ye in the ways. That's plural. Ways, plural. That means there are many different kind of ways that you can stand in. Oh, hallelujah. I'll let that permeate, saturate in your spirit right there. Because it says, stand ye in the ways. Multiple ways. People are into any and everything. They are excluding him from every facet of their life. And they are upset when you disturb them and try to put light on the situation. If a person is down in a dark room and he's been in that room for a long time, if you turn the light on, it hurts his eyes. See, a lot of people are being hurt by the word. It's quenching up to turn the light off. No, you need to see where you're going. You need to understand that you're on a path, you're on, in a way that may be detrimental to your soul, that may cause hurt, harm, and danger in the long run. Thus said the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see. So you need to observe what is going on in this life. Don't just be a person that just lacks a days you'll lead, just go through a life and just trifle through life any kind of a way. The scripture says, stand ye in the ways and see, look around and take notice of what's going on in this world. Don't just be a person that just whatever come, yeah, okay, I'm, I'm down with that. No, you can't be down with everything. Stand in the ways and see and ask. You need to open your mouth and ask somebody that knows how to give you a good answer. Don't go to the, the worst place and ask nobody no question. You know, just like sometimes young people, um, they will uh, ask their peers, somebody that they know that's going to give them the answer that they want to hear. Well, what you think about this? My mama said this or my daddy said that or that preacher said this. What you think about it? You need to ask somebody with some wisdom. You need to ask somebody with some knowledge. You need to ask somebody that have been through something. You can't go to somebody that's in the same boat that you in and, and asking them to, what do you think. They're going to tell you what you want to hear. Ask for the old paths. Sometimes people, they hate the old paths. Don't come to me with, oh, he old school. You know, sometimes they, they throw you off like that. Oh, he old school. Well, let me tell you something, my friend. Air is old school. Try to stop breathing for a while. Food is old school. Stop eating from now on. Hallelujah. Heartbeat is old school. It's been going on since the beginning of life. Try your heart, stop your heart from beating. You're talking about that's old school. What are you saying when you're saying that? Old school, the, this is what the, the scripture is telling you. Stand ye and see and ask for the old paths. Ask for the thing that worked. Ask for the thing that kept people alive. Ask for the thing that sustained life. Ask for the thing that will promote eternal life. Where is the old paths? That's not saying that you got to go get some old, old clothes and put them on. No, we ain't talking about that. We ain't talking about wearing no dress, gra dragging the ground to, to think you holy and sanctified. No, that ain't got nothing to do with what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the, the old way that keeps your life strong, that builds you up. Did you not know that the food that we ate in the old days was more potent, had more nourishment in it. 
and was able to satisfy you trying to do away with the old, talking about, oh, that's old school. You better be longing for the old school. The old school is what uh, people are standing up on. They're propped up on the, the foundation. Old school is the foundation of life. And if you get rid of it, your life is going to be short. It's going to be a wreck. That's why all these people are having so many problems today. They're trying to do all this new stuff that's out. Even the music, the old school music is much better than all this new stuff that they got out. You, you listen to some of the music back in the 60s. That's still popular. Uh, the Motown music and all that music. A, a lot of it made more sense than this stuff that you listen at today. So a, a lot of times, don't ever, don't ever criticize the old school. That, the, the old school is carrying all of the substance. Even now, today, my friend, let me tell you something. Do you not know that the economy is, is thriving because of the older people, because of the retirees, because a lot of the young people don't even want to work anymore. They can't even find people that wants to work. The old school people, they're the ones that, that got the work ethic. They're the ones that know how to go to work, know how to be faithful, know how to, to be persistent. A lot of these young people have never held a job for over three years. The same job. They're here, they're there. They haven't, a lot of them have went to college, but they still don't have the work ethic. So the scripture is very important. It's telling us to, uh, uh, let's read it again in, in Jeremiah 6 and 16. It says, thus said the Lord. First of all, you got to notice who talking to you. The Lord is telling you this. Stand you in the way. The Lord is saying, I want you to stand in the way. I want you to check things out. I want you to be uh, the one to discover your way. I don't want you to be forced into anything. I don't want to make you like you're a robot that you got to do everything. I just push a button to you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. No, I want you to choose the right way. Thus said the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old paths. So he's telling you that a lot of substance have been lost in the old path. You have to go back. You remember in the time in the scripture, I believe in the book of Ezra, when the people have got off course and they had started living all kinds of ways. And all of a sudden, somebody wanted to go and resort back to the word. And in the word, which was the old path, they found out that they had violated and went against the laws, statutes, and commandments, and had intermingled and married with all different other kind of women. Back in those days, men's hearts were so pure that they even put their wives away because they discovered that they had done the wrong thing and it was displeasing and it had caused disruption in the entire uh, body of Hebrews. Another incident that happened is when the Ark of the Covenant was lost, when they went to recover it, uh, they did not follow the old path. They did not follow the rules and the regulations of how to transport it. So they went and got a new cart. They got a new cart and placed it up on the new cart that was driven by an ox. Hallelujah. See, people want to, to use beastly uh, 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 ways to do and to navigate through life. But the ark, they went and found out after Uzziah reached out his hand because the ark stumbled on the way back to bring the ark of the covenant back into the camp. The ark stumbled and began to shake. So Uzziah reached forth his hand to try to balance it. To keep it from falling. And you know what? God struck him dead. He fell dead right then and there. And so the Ark of the Covenant had to be uh, taken to a close by place. Which was Obed-Edom's house. And the scripture said that Obed-Edom's house was blessed. Because the Ark of the Covenant was there. Hallelujah. So uh, we have to understand uh, that they made a mistake. They put it on a new court, 
And that was not the way to transport it. When they went back, David was so disturbed in his spirit that he went back and researched the word, went back and restudied it, went back to find out, oh, the Ark of the Covenant was supposed to be born on the shoulders of men. And it was not to even be carried with your hand because they had long poles called staves that they put through the rings that were on the ark. See, the Most High had designed that this thing got to be carried on your shoulder. Men want a quick, easy way to worship and to serve the Most High, but you got to bear this thing on your shoulder. You got to feel the weight of it. And that's what people don't want to feel. They don't want to feel the weight of living righteous and living holy. They don't want to feel the weight of the word upon them and having the responsibility to, to adhere to the word. They want to put it on a, a cart and let the ox drive it. Let the ox do all the work. But it was supposed to be born on the shoulders of men. Hallelujah. So when he went back and read the scriptures and found out that they had made a mistake, they went back and did it right, went back to Obed-Edom's house. And I believe Obed-Edom was so blessed that he said, y'all can leave it here. I'm all right because blessings were just flowing in his house. Hallelujah. For that time period that that Ark of the Covenant was there, Obed-Edom became rich. He was blessed. Blessing was just coming from everywhere. So wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there is blessings. However, they went back and got it and they put the staves in and it was born by the Levites. They had to have special people that were to carry it. And it was born on their shoulders. And they took it on back and they was rejoicing that David was so happy that, that they was doing it right until he danced and was dancing halfway out his clothes. Hallelujah. That's why you can't fault people if they want to dance as long as they're dancing in the spirit. You know, you, you criticizing people for dancing. Well, if you dancing in the spirit, I'll go on ahead and dance. I ain't got nothing to say about it. Hallelujah. You have people doing all kind of wicked dances. Folks ain't saying too much about that. But let's get back to our point. You got to stand in the path. So they found out that they had missed something. They was carrying it the wrong way. The old path will reveal to you different things that you need to know, different things that you need to do, different ways that you need to live. It's revealed in the old paths. Then, after the Lord told them, he said, thus said the Lord, that's, what, that's why I'm kind of sticking with this because the Most High was talking to him. Thus said the Lord, stand, you go and stand in the way. I want you to go and check things out. I want you to look at this thing for what it is. And this is what I'm challenging you to do today. Look around. See what's, ha see what's working in the world. Look at the young people. See what they're doing. See, see what kind of lifestyle they got. See if they are seeking the face of the Lord. See if, if, if they have any kind of experience with him a lot of the young people don't have any experience i seen a young man on yesterday young fella about in his early maybe 20s maybe have been a teenager with his shirt bulging out he got a chopper up under his shirt a weapon you know a chopper is like a, a miniature machine gun he's got a chopper up under his shirt Walking around, I guess he's probably living that kind of lifestyle. Well, in my estimation, he ain't going to be around long because you you doing and living like that, that you, you're inviting danger into your life. So you look around and see, stand you in the ways and see. And when you look around it with sense, It'll make you ask for the old, where's the old path, man? I, I ain't got, I don't want to be around all this crazy foolishness these folk doing. Shooting and killing and dying of, 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 of this drug called fentanyl and all this kind of stuff. On the, where's the old path? Let me go back to the old path where, where folk live longer, where folk had, uh, had, had pleasurable lives in the Lord. Where is the old path? Where is the good way? Is there a good way? Yes, there is. And then when you find it, 
Don't just say, oh, that's nice, and then keep on going to what you've been doing. No, you got to bear it on your shoulder. You got to take it up and put it on your shoulder. Don't throw it and put it on a, a ox cart, cart and let the ox carry all the weight. No, it's for you to carry. You got to take up the responsibilities of living a life that the Most High can be pleased with. You can't shrub it off like sometimes you talk to people. They're all, oh, yeah, pray for me, real. Pray for me, real. And they yet doing whatever they want to do. And yeah, pray for me. Keep the faith. They telling you to keep the faith. And then, then they going on doing whatever they want to do. The devil is a lie. You ain't going to have me praying my tongue out and you sending up a storm. Doing whatever you want to do. You better repent and stand in the ways and see and ask for the old path. Where is the good way? And then when you find it, bear it on your shoulders. Walk therein. And then the scriptures say, and ye shall find rest for your souls. That's what's wrong with folk. They don't have no rest. Folk just is restless. You got to do all this stuff. You got to put on all that stuff. You got to... Uh, eyelashes so long, they, they they got your eyes heavy. You can't even blink them. They're so big. You fanning the air, just, just blinking them, them eyelashes. Where is the good way? Hallelujah. It's all this stuff that folk got to do. Why you got to do all of that? Because you don't have any rest. You should find rest for your soul. That's why people are so restless. That's why they have to go and run, stay out all night. You ain't got no rest. You need to stand you in the ways. You need to seek out and ask for the old path. Where is the good way? When you find it, you need to walk there in it. You need to bear it on your shoulders. You need to take up the responsibility for living this life. Somebody got to take it up. Somebody got to do this thing. Somebody got to bear it. You know, that's what the problem is. When you begin to line it out to people, then they don't understand that uh, they, they got a responsibility. You remember the story that Christ told about the, the, the young man that had the barns that brought forth, forth much goods. He brought forth much good in his barns. Hallelujah. I'm just going to read a little bit of it for you. Uh, Luke 12 and 16, he says, And he spake a parable unto them, saying, A certain uh, rich man brought forth plentifully. See, this is the order of the day. People want to be rich today. Everybody want to be rich. Okay, there ain't nothing wrong with being rich, but you got to know what to do with riches when you get it. The Bible tells you they that will be rich fall into diverse temptations and many hurtful lusts. So we're not going to try to make that the purpose of our life is to be rich because you find yourself serving manna rather than serving the most high. But let's look at what it says. And, and he brought and uh, he thought within himself saying, what shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruit. And he said, I would this will I do. I will pull down my bones and build greater. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, There it is again. See, the Most High, he's going to talk to us. That's why a lot of times when people leave out of here in, in, in life, don't think that the Most High haven't talked to them. Sometimes they come by his house and hear the word and everything, but they, they choose what they want to do. And then next thing you know, they're no longer here. Well, he was talking to them. Don't ever think that the Most High is unjust. He's going to talk to people. He's talking to somebody right now. Don't, don't be so upset because he, you, oh, I don't want to hear nothing from him. That may be the person he want to talk to you and speak to you through. The person that you don't want to hear. The person that you're trying to go all around is the person he sent to you. Hallelujah. Let's look at what it says because I'm getting ready to let you go in a short uh, period of time. He said, I will say to my soul, soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease. Eat, drink, and be merry. That's all folk want to do. Eat, drink, be merry. Have fun. Party. 
Go out, dance, fix up, uh, put on your nice clothes and put your tight uh, uh, pants on and, and go out and have fun. Go out and party. It's more to life than that, my friend. Eating, drinking, and being merry. Going out, having a good time. No, you need to make preparation for your soul. All right, let me move on. It said, but God said unto him. See, you got to understand, God going to talk to you. Thou fool, if God call you a fool, can't nobody say you're intelligent. Can't nobody change what he said. If he said you was a fool, you might as well go and find you one of them hats that they be wearing with the little balls on the end of it. Hallelujah. And God said unto him, Thy fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. This night? Hallelujah. Oh, he don't have much preparation time because he done put everything before the Most High. He have made all his plans, all his preparation, and planting stuff in the ground that belongs to the Most High. All the yield that he got, it was, it was the Lord's. He is the one that caused it to grow. God give the increase. But he didn't have time for him. So he said, okay, now fool, let me talk to you. Thou fool. Thy soul should be required of thee. What you mean required? You're going to have to give an account of everything that you have done. Thy soul should be required of thee. Then whose shall those things be which thou have provided? Did you not know it, it, it's something? When you really start understanding life, and I'm so glad that the Most High give me this capability. When you start really understanding life, you're only here for a certain amount of time. I don't care how many accumulations or how many possessions you have. I don't care how many houses you got or how much money you got in the bank. The scripture says, uh, whose? Let me read that again. Then God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose shall those things be? Who you going to leave all that stuff to? Sometimes you done hoarded up all this stuff and don't even have nobody to receive it. And the state end up getting everything you got. And they fall into the hand of wicked folks. Because you didn't want your, I uh, got mine, you got to get yours. You know, that's what black, black folk like to say. I uh, got mine, you got to get yours. Slip up and die and leave it and somebody else get all the inheritance. Hallelujah. Let me read on a little bit further. Whose shall those things be which thou have provided? Sometimes people go out of, out of their way trying to accumulate all this stuff. And notwithstanding, you, you ain't you done got so much now, you ain't going to be able to spend all of it. You, you done got yourself in a position now, you're just going to leave it to somebody. You should have just went on and gave your life to the Lord instead of just uh, uh, spending all your time selfishly gaining, uh, you know, saving, working, and now you got old, tired, and woe out. Can't even enjoy yourself. Talking about, I'm getting ready to travel now. You see people to save all their life. Talking about, I'm getting ready to travel when I retire. You trying to travel on a walker. You trying to travel in a, a, a motorized chair. You should have spent some of that time when you was young. You should have spent some of that time in the house of the Lord. You should have gave him some of that time. Hallelujah. But wherever you are found at now, you need to stand in the way and seek and ask for the old path. Go back to the old way. Go back to what we're doing every day. Go back to praying. Go back to seeking his faith. That's the old path. Then what it says here in verse 21, so... Is he that laid up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God? Hallelujah. That's all I want to talk about on that because right now we're trying to get you to stand and see and ask for the good way. Hallelujah. Where is the good path? We're getting ready to summarize, getting ready to close. Thus said the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see. You need to see something in this journey in life. You need to understand that your life is temporary. I'm looking at all of those. Now, let me say this. I'm talking to people of wisdom. And I don't expect everybody to hear what I'm saying because everybody don't have the wisdom and the knowledge to understand uh, the things that we, we are talking about. They're spiritual things. I'm looking at understanding that the older that you get, the more people that you see that are leaving here. 
And some people don't be talking about that. I don't want to. Well, one day you're going to have to do it whether you want to hear it or not. The older you get, the more you see people are leaving here. And, you, and sometimes when you look and see, it, it's senseless the way they, they live their life. They didn't have no kind of claws in there where they can talk about the most high. They don't have any kind of testimony of, of spending time with him or, or testimonies of how they helped to deliver somebody and give them the word and somebody's life was transformed and gave to uh, the living of this life or some woke somebody up uh, to know who they were. No, none of that. Stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? And then when you find it, sisters and brothers, walk in it. And you shall find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk therein. Isn't that something? After all those good things I just said, after all those good things that we re were revealed in the scripture, after they found a good way and was blessed, when the Ark of the Covenant stopped at Obanedom's house, he was blessed. But they said, I don't know, I ain't studying all that. I'm having me some fun. I'm having me a good time. And that's what's going to be the downfall of the generation that we're living in today. They're too selfish to stop their way of life. So they want to continue to do whatever they want to do, and therefore, they're going to miss their blessing. All right, I know a lot of people sometimes that when you start talking like this, they don't want to hear it because it's factual. But they said they're not going to walk therein. Also, I said a watchman over you saying, hearken to the sounds of the trumpet. But they said, we will not hearken. So this is what kind of uh, people that we're dealing with. And you start talking like this, I, don't, I, I ain't listening to him no more because he's trying to get me to stop having fun. No, that ain't what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get you to stand in the way and see and uh, be observant. And don't just waste your life away and understand that this thing is serious. Hallelujah. He said, also, I said a watchman over you, saying, hearken unto the sound of the trumpet. But they said, we were not hearken. Therefore, hear, ye nations, and know, O ye congregation, what is among them. Hear, O earth, behold, I will bring evil upon this people, even the fruit of their thoughts, because they have not hearkened unto my words, nor to my law, but rejected it. All right, we don't want to be in that class, but we want to be in the class where the people are blessed. That's where we want to be. Come on, let's give them some praise, somebody. And that's where we are. We, we are not in that class of people. We're, we're, not, we're not in that way. But it may be somebody in and on this channel that may be inconsiderate of the ways of righteousness. We want you to consider. We want you to stand in the way. We want you to see. and We want you to ask for the old path. We want you to know and ask for the thing that really works. And then when you find it, sisters and brothers, walk in it. Then you're going to be able to get that rest that you've been seeking. It's not the rest is not in the drugs. It's not in the alcohol. It's not in the illicit sexual activity. That's not the rest that you uh, need to sustain you, but it's, it's rest that is found in walking in the ways of righteousness. All right, sisters and brothers, we, we have come to another close of a session, and as usual, I always enjoy the presence of the people of the Most High. Today, we're looking at the good way. We want to encourage you to walk in the good way. We want you to encourage, be encouraged to stand in the way and be observant. And when you do that, you'll find out, wow, ain't nothing like the good way. Nothing like the ways of righteousness. All right. Let's look away and pray out. Father, we thank you once again for everybody that's joined in on this line. We pray, Father, that you cause them to look and see and understand that they're on the right path. We pray, Father, that you enlighten them even further. Reveal to them even more of what they ought to do and what they should do. We speak blessings over your people. Bless them, their house, their family, their children. 
and all that's attached to them. In the name of Yahweh Shai, that the world knows Jesus. Amen and amen. All right, family, we're so happy to just be with you again. And uh, we noticed something that uh, some of our subscribers uh, have diminished because of the activity of the person that came on and disrupted our channel. So we want you to subscribe and hit the like button and the notification bell and be a part of this, this work that we're doing and be a part of this daily prayer and devotion that your life may be made better through the adhering of the word, through the patience, and through the spirit that you may receive everything that's in store for you through the kingdom. Share this channel with somebody and encourage somebody to seek out their salvation in the name of the Most High. All right, family, we're so thankful for you. We thank you for the time that you spend with us every day. Those of you that may find it in your heart, we want you to uh, support the ministry financially. You'll be able to find that in the blue links, whichever way that you uh, choose to give to the ministry. Yes, we need your help to be able to continue to do what we do. And we hope that you're blessed through this word that we are giving you today. All right, family, that's all we have. We want to say peace and blessings in the name of the Most High. Shalom. Hallelujah.